the Canucks versus the Hurricanes. This one was an anticipated game, sort of. It was the first 7 p.m. start that we've had here in Vancouver in a while. And this game, I mean, the only thing that I could have asked for in this game was for Besser to get a point because Barzal got two points earlier today. But other than that, this game was not really the best game to watch before the second period. Okay, that first period was absolute dog trash, okay? The first period against the Hurricanes in this game outshot 11-3. Markstrom keeps us in the game, and we'll get to Markstrom, by the way. Keeps us in the game, and by the time the first period is over, everyone's like, okay, this game is absolute trash. I don't want to watch this. This is bad. It's boring Canucks hockey. The Hurricanes are doing everything they can to get a shot on net, and it's working. They're just not scoring. But the second period comes around, and all of a sudden, we have an awakening. We have Derek Pouliot taking the puck after Henrik Sedin isn't able to cater it. He isn't able to control it the way he'd like to. So Pouliot jumps up into the play in the neutral zone, grabs the puck, starts skating down, and he deeks, he cuts to the left, and he shoots to the right. The good old NHL 15 goal. The one that would go in on the last gen all the time, where you go left and you shoot right. And this one goes in right here. Derek Pouliot had such a good game. His movement and his awareness was off the charts, and I just loved every play that he did. This was an incredible game for Derek Pouliot, and it shows in the box score. The second goal of the game on the power play, it's some good cycling with our second unit. The first unit had some good cycling as well. I love the fact that Edler got the puck and he actually passed it to Besser again. Besser nails that one-timer, it goes wide, the puck rattles around the boards, Henrik Sedin picks it up, back to Edler, back over to Besser for another one-timer. That was a sequence that happened two times in the same shift, right in a row, and I was like, okay, this is good. Edler is trusting Besser more now. This is what we wanted. But the second unit is what gets things done here. As Pouliot has the puck on the left side, he throws it over to Gagne on the right side. Gagne takes a low, far side slap shot. And Thomas Vanek is right there in front of the net. And he puts his stick out. He does a little counterclockwise rotation forwards and he tips the puck to go in short side. An absolutely beautiful showcase of hand-eye coordination from Vanek and honestly we've seen that all season from Vanek. Vanek is one of those guys who if he stays on the team next year I'd be perfectly fine with that because he's been solid. I like having solid players on the Canucks and I know it's in our best interest to move Vanek out for a pick Maybe get a prospect back or something, because we need to go young. But I don't mind having Vanek on the team, because he does a lot of things right. His offensive awareness and his puck movement, his skills with the puck, is very strong, and it shows in almost everything that he does in the offensive zone. That's Pouliot's second point of the game. The first point was a goal, the second point was an assist on this Vanek goal, and Pouliot had another one. And this was another one where it was kind of good because, I mean, this one, it was a special goal. It was Nikolai Goldobin's first goal of the season, his first goal after coming back from the AHL, and it was a good one. It was a really good one. Horvat's down low. He's doing a few little spins on the end of the trapezoid there. He's going back and forth, back and forth. Goldobin kind of skates around him. And he's like, okay, okay, I'm just gonna wait, I'm just gonna wait. So Goldobin finally peeks out to the front of the net at the hash marks. Horvat goes off to the end boards into the corner, throws it off. Goldobin's got it. He's coming in with a good opportunity. He takes a shot and it goes off the post. But the rebound comes right back and he scores on the open side. Nikolai Goldobin has finally scored a goal. It only took a few months into this season. Granted, he did spend a lot of that time at the AHL, but I think people are starting to realize now that Goldobin, he deserves his spot up here in the end. And this was Derek Pouliot's third point of the game. This was a fantastic showcase for Pouliot. He had such a strong game, and it's so refreshing to be seeing a young guy who had a lot of potential when he was drafted, actually living up to those expectations. 
I mean, he didn't have those expectations earlier. Like, the Penguins were like, no, you suck. You're not going to get a chance to play. And you're not going to be able to develop because we're not giving you a chance to play. He was stuck in a loop with the Penguins. And now that he's here, he's getting that opportunity to show that he is the player that he was drafted to be. And he's just getting better. This is his first three-point game of his career. And this was really, really good. I loved this game from Pouliot. All of his plays, especially in the defensive zone, I really liked his quick ability to move the puck out as well as get the puck up specified for each different situation. Other than that, I mean, I was impressed with a lot of other players in this game. Henrik Sedin especially, like, he was able to deke somebody out. When was the last time he's done that? He straight up deked out the defender on the one-on-one -on -one and was able to come right in. He just couldn't beat the stick of the goaltender. And if he would have, I think he would have gotten a goal too. But I'm still more than happy with the result. And the result, I mean, the result was a 3 nothing game. And it was 3 nothing, which means that Jacob Markstrom finally has a shutout in his 115th start. After 3,576 saves, Markstrom has finally gotten a shutout. And I kind of want to thank Ian McIntyre. Because at the beginning, everybody was like, okay, Ian McIntyre is here on the TV, and he's talking about Markstrom not getting a shutout. He's talking about Markstrom potentially setting the record for most starts without a shutout. And because of that, I mean, or maybe because of all the people on Twitter saying, I hope he gets the shutout or whatever, or maybe because of all the people on Discord saying, oh, he better get the shutout. He finally got a shutout. And it feels so good. The team's reaction when the time finally ran down. Everybody was so happy. The whole building was lit with joy. And even though Brock Besser didn't get a point, this was still such a good game for the Canucks as a whole. And Jacob Markstrom, man, he's not setting that record anytime soon. If he wants to set that record, longest streak without a shutout, he's gonna have to go and do it again. But I don't believe that's gonna happen. He's already got one shutout, and that's all we needed from him. That was so nice to watch for Canucks fans. It was such a feel-good moment, and, I mean, they're Hurricanes. You gotta give them credit. I mean, they did have 11 shots in the first period, but they weren't able to score. They had 30 in total. Markstrom saved every single one, and tough luck. That's hockey. You know what else is hockey? The fact that Besser didn't get any points. And I wanted Besser to get points in this game because Matthew Barzal got two assists in the Islanders game earlier today, and Besser wasn't able to convert. I mean, there were the two one-timers that he had in the power play, but those kind of went wide. There was another opportunity where he was given the puck and he shot it, but it kind of didn't go the way that he wanted it to. Overall, Besser probably didn't play the best game that he could have, but at least he didn't do anything wrong, which I'm perfectly fine with, as long as we got guys on the team who aren't actually costing us goals, you know, that's, that's good. And Besser's 20 years old, he's not supposed to be scoring every single game, however, it is preferable that he does because Matthew Barzal is an assist-making machine. Overall, though, this was a good game, and I'm so happy with the result. Markstrom finally gets a shutout, Goldobin finally gets a goal, and Pouliot has a three-point night. There were three really big stories in this game, and this is what I kind of love seeing as a Canucks fan watching these games. Stories. And this is why I don't make videos on some games, because some games there aren't really any stories, but this one there are stories. And that's what I love to make the videos about, because these stories are what gets me excited for Canucks hockey. And this game... It was exciting after the first period. The first period was dog trash. We're not going to listen to that. But the second and third periods, I really liked their play. And overall, this was a fun game to watch for Canucks fans, as well as it was a statistically good game for Canucks fans in terms of shutouts, goals, and points. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Plus, you can download the Trolls like and subscribe to Gaming, and bye.